What do you think of the arguments that have been made by some around mortality trade-offs, disease trade-offs? And um, it's forgive me because it's been a few years since I looked at the literature on this topic. But if I remember correctly, there are only very few studies that have looked at the quality of the diet that have considered that as a confounding variable in the studies that compare more plant-based diets or vegan diets or vegetarian diets to meat containing diets, omnivorous diets. Um, I think it was the UK's UK shoppers study, if I remember correctly, where, which was one of the studies where they, they specifically examined more ethical omnivores, people who were making choices to eat, you know, things like grass fed beef or, or pasture raised dairy and free range chicken and so on. Um, and I've seen people make the argument that when you look at those kinds of evidence, what you see is, is really very little difference in overall all-cause mortality and lifespan between vegans and vegetarians versus omnivores. And what, what you do see is more of a, a difference in specific diseases. So vegan diets tend to, be, to have very strong evidence uh, that they lower heart disease risk and cancer risk. But the risk of sarcopenia and diseases associated with that generally go up. And, you know, ba basically the argument is that, you know, vegan diets lower your risk of these specific diseases, but they might increase risk of other things like muscle wasting and sarcopenia over here. And therefore, you know, don't really have a, a net benefit. What do you think of those kinds of arguments? I think that they're um, inadequate and they're not looking at the full um, amount of evidence we have. They're just trying to use an argument, trying to collect some data to support those arguments based on some British studies where there was a study on British vegans that you're talking about where they had more osteoporosis. But when you analyze the diets that were being used, they're eating tremendous amounts of white flour products and processed foods. Their diet was, was overly um, burdened with carbohydrates, did not have nuts and seeds and beans in it. And I analyzed the diet you, that were most people following in that study. They had half the calcium compared to the, I compared it on a blog, compared to a nutritarian diet, compared to the Dutch diet being followed in the UK study you're referring to. And they had half the calcium and half the protein compared to the diet, a nutritarian diet, which uses, a, you know, the regular use of beans and nuts and greens and the vegetables in the diet each day. So it was, they were, and the, so the diet was, um, I was critical of that diet, that type of vegan diet by my standards of nutritional excellence and think that they're not examples of healthy eating. And the data comparing, um, you know, grass fed or healthy versions of animal, healthier versions of animal products has fall, flopped on its face because all these recent studies, and I can show, I can pull up on my screen, I can pull some studies up to show people if you'd like. Sure. Um, what, okay, let's do that now. I'll see if I can get them. That um, that look at this and most of the um, the negative effects of animal products and the shortening of, of lifespan that occurred, occurred in studies where they used in you know, in Australia or South America or around the world where they do use grass fed and, and more naturally, not commercially raised animal products. There was no difference between longevity reduction from animal products used from commercial sources in the United States or used that are that were more wild or grass fed from other countries. It's same corroborating data when everybody, anybody did the study. And the studies on um, looking at reduction of red meat and longevity don't show a reduction of longevity from red meat because they're because what foods are the people eating when they reduce the red meat and invariably they're eating more chicken and pasta and olive oil they're not they're eating so they reduce red meat and they don't eat more natural plants in place of red meat like beans or nuts or greens so that's why these studies have so much more value because most of the studies where people say look not much difference in meat reduction is because the people ate more white meat they just ate more chicken they just reduced red meat for chicken and then people still so saying, look, meat's not so bad, but they just ate more chicken. Well, the problem is, is chicken doesn't contain phytochemicals and antioxidants. It's also it's not it's a nutrient. It's just a, a source of macronutrients of protein and fat, but it has no significant micronutrient load, fiber, phytochemicals, sterols, stanols, all the things that extend human lifespan are in the beans and the nuts and the greens. And it's not about just putting in chicken and eating more pasta and olive oil. It's cutting back on meat and eating more beans and nuts and green vegetables. And on those studies, we do have available today. And we see market benefits in longevity. We're talking about 40% reduction in cancer, 40% reduction in heart attack rates, 30% reduction in cancer rates, and, and no um, cause of sarcopenia or muscle wasting. The only thing that these paleo and carnivore people also do to, to confuse people 
is they talk about studies on strokes because there's a ratio, there's a relationship between higher cholesterol levels and hemorrhagic stroke in Asian countries because they eat so much salt in those Asian countries. They'll eat like between 3,000 and 5,000 milligrams of sodium a day, and they'll be on diets that are mostly plant-based. And the sodium causes microvascular hemorrhaging and weakening of the endothelial lining over time, and it weakens the blood vessels in the brain. And those, po those Asian populations have a much higher risk of hemorrhagic stroke than embolic or ischemic stroke in this country. So when we're looking at reduction in stroke, you're looking at the reduction of hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke, not the reduction of embolic stroke. In other words, I'm saying now is they have 10 times the amount of hemorrhagic stroke in those Asian countries that consume a lot of salt. We have 10 times the amount in the United States of ischemic or embolic stroke caused by clots, caused by eating high cholesterol foods and saturated fat. They have so the, the different type of fat strokes. One's caused by a clot, the other's caused by a bleed, which is the opposite of a clot, completely opposite. And eating a diet with more bacon and cheese and cholesterol in it, or whatever you're eating, to produce more atherosclerosis thickens the blood vessels in the brain and makes them more resilient or resistant to cracking open and bleeding into them when you're having a high salt diet. But it's still the salt that caused the stroke. On a, on a diet that was more plant-based. And if you didn't have the salt, you wouldn't have had a hemorrhagic stroke. So what I'm saying is that there's a, that cholesterol levels affect risk of ischemic stroke because if the cholesterol is higher, you have higher risk of ischemic stroke and cholesterol levels affect the risk of hemorrhagic stroke because as the, vex, as the cholesterol goes lower, you have higher risk of hemorrhagic stroke. So less, so the cholesterol levels, so they can look at low cholesterol countries that aren't eating a lot of animal products and see, look, when you give them more animal products and more meat, they have lower rates of hemorrhagic stroke. When you raise their cholesterol, they have lower rates of stroke in Asian countries. Okay, that's true, but our goal isn't to switch, is, that's still not, our goal is to have neither type of stroke. And, and that's, so I think a nutritarian diet is just a step above, um, and, it's, and it's a lot of confusion. And, and as you know, the confusion is because people have agendas they wanna push. And they're not looking at nutritional research in an unbiased manner and trying to ascertain what's best. They always have some preference they want to, you know, 